So uh, in this video, I'm going to show how to use the Laplace transforms and convolution to solve an ODE. So the ODE I'm going to solve is y double prime plus 4y equal 2, 2 times t. All right, so the first step, uh, as before, is to take transforms of both sides. So, oh yeah, and we need an initial condition. Let's just go with the simple one, y of 0 equals 0, and y prime of 0 equals 0. <clears throat> so the transform of the equation gives me s squared times capital Y of s. The initial conditions drop out, and that's going to be added to 4 times y of s. And on the right-hand side, we have 2 times t, which is going to be 2 over s squared. And so solving this for y of s, we get 2 over s. Actually, I'm going to rewrite that slightly. I'm going to write and move the 2 on the other one. So this is going to be 1 over s squared times, and I'll put the 2 here, but then divide through by s squared plus 4. And you can see why I've done that. This is the product of transforms that we had in the previous video. So the, the inverse transform of 1 over s squared now that I've rewritten it in um, a, a more useful way, is just going to be t and the Laplace inverse transform of 2 over s squared plus 4 is going to be sine of 2t. Okay, and now, now that I want to solve this equation, I don't have to do any serious monkeying around with those functions, I can just write down that if this is, if this one here is f of s and this one here is g of s, then according to the result in the convolution from the previous video on the playlist, I now know that um, y of t is equal to the convolution of f with g as a function of t, and that means that I take the integral from 0 to u. Uh, well, in this case, it's actually going to be t. u became t here. So it's the integral from 0 to t, g of w, times f of t minus w, dw. And just worth noting here, this is one of the, or the property that I alluded to in the last video that I would get back to. Notice that um, f convolved with g is the same as g convolved with f. So if I write it down, you can switch between these two forms. So f convolved with g of t is going to be integral from 0 to t of f of w g of t minus w dw and you can get from one of these to the other by doing a substitution here where let's say you say that u is equal to t minus w and you would get this expression oh but it would have a u here instead of a w but those are dummy variables so they really are just the same and so the, but this is the, this amounts to saying that uh, convolution commutes. In other words, you don't doesn't matter if you do f convolved with g or g convolved with f. And so now we can just take this integral here and write down y of t as long as we can calculate that integral. This is going to be the integral from zero to t of g little g of s is sine of two t, and little f of t is just um, let's see, uh, so this is g and the yeah, f of t minus w, so a little f is just t, so this is t minus w. Ah, but that should have been a g of w. So I take g, the inverse transform of g is this guy, and that gives me sine of 2t, but I plug in little g of w, so that's sine of 2w, and then I multiply that by f of t minus w, which is, now this is t, f of t is t, but that gets replaced by t minus w. 
and then I multiply that by dw. And so this, you can go through calculation of this using uh, an integration by parts, and you can end up with um, the solution in just a couple lines. So the, um, the general principle here is that you don't have to figure out the inverse transform of this guy by, for example, doing partial fraction decomposition and all the other steps to invert it. You can just do it by uh, not so simple, but maybe simpler um, integration by parts exercise.